Let me say something. Hey, what's up? Damn it, I wasn't going to say hey, man. Anyway, what's up everybody out in YouTube land? Hey, what up KX Crew, and welcome to the second installment in the Rise and Fall series. Today we're going to take a look at the Hodge Twins and see their growth and decline in popularity. The Twins are one of the funniest combinations of people that I have ever seen, and they have been dominating the YouTube system since its early days. They were YouTube pioneers in their own right, covering subjects like current events, giving advice, health and fitness, and discussing subjects that you'd want to watch with the volume on low, if you know what I mean. This is the rise and fall of the Hodge Twins. It's your lucky day, man. You just found the right YouTube channel, man. man. This video is about explaining the disclaimer, man. It's all oh, this information, man. This is okay, just a, I'm a, okay. Just a disclaimer before we get into it. I have a few points that I want to make clear here so that I don't have to do this in every single video. I've been a fan of the Hodge Twins for a very long time, but I haven't seen every single one of their videos. If you feel that I've portrayed the Twins inaccurately, feel free to correct me in the comments. I hope that you find I do them justice. And I also want to emphasize this point in response to a lot of the comments I got in the Elliot Hulse video. I understand that this title could also be called The Evolution of the Hodge Twins. The point of these videos is to document the rise in popularity that the YouTuber in question experienced, followed by what we can describe as a downfall in viewership over time as a result of the video content the YouTubers put out and a change in personality. I'm also not doing this series to bring any YouTuber down. I'm not trying to breed hate, spread information, or create slanderous statements about any creator here. I'm not trying to bring anybody down. Anyone I cover in this series are people that at one point I carried a lot of respect for, and I'm making this video for them partially out of how much respect I have for them. Lastly, in regards to this specific video, we're going to be covering controversial subjects that you could possibly disagree with. In fact, I'm sure that I will say something that you disagree with, and that's okay. Just try to keep your comment gun in its holster and avoid a comment war with anyone who shares a different view on the world than you. This video is also going to be covering racial issues. I will do my best to be as sensitive as possible. I'm a white guy and I do my best to treat every race with utmost respect, but I'm sorry in advance if I offend anyone while talking about these difficult subjects. It was not my intention. So with all that out of the way, let's get into it. You gotta move on. And the biggest way to move on is to... Before we get into the YouTube side of things, we should talk about what happened beforehand because it helps us understand Keith and Kevin Hodge as people, not as public figures. Just to touch briefly on it, before YouTube, they had normal day-to-day -day jobs like the rest of us. They even experienced getting fired from their jobs for goofing around and making too many videos for fun during their shifts. Eventually, they quit their jobs to become entertainers. They had a strong desire to make others laugh and went out of their way to take acting classes to better improve this skill. This can maybe help us see why they became so popular as they put a lot of time into improv comedy. This is a foundation that many YouTubers don't have before getting into the entertainment industry. Dude, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It was all by mistake, really. It wasn't yeah. really planned. I mean, we were insurance uh, adjusters down there in Costa Mesa for AAA at the time. That's fun. Right. Yeah. And I went to Kevin. I was like, hey, man, uh, let's start a YouTube channel, you know? It'll be fun. Uh, no, you didn't say it like that. You said, let's be comedians. Oh, I, yeah. I looked at him, I'm like, <laughs> thought we was going to be CPAs, you <laughs> like, hey, we? Cause we had four year degrees in the account, never used them. Well, I used them, but when we got there, mm. I said, it sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our personalities didn't fit with those. But call. anyway, we started a camp. YouTube channel. They also joined the Marine Corps at some point in their early YouTube years and have some interesting videos discussing their experiences. Okay. He was in third battalion. I was in first battalion. You recording? Yeah, I'm recording, fool. Shut up. I would imagine their time in the Marines would have heavily impacted their desire for fitness as well as boosted their confidence and perspective when voicing their opinions on the world. The Hodge Twins began their YouTube journey in 2008 when they began the Hodge Twins channel. Y'all ready for story time with the Hodge Twins? This is real, true life stories. This ain't no damn Hansel and Gretchen. <laughs> it was a channel where they sat beside each other and just talked about everything. For the most part, it was news-related content and forced their opinions on current events. Many people, myself included, found the Hodge Twins through their health and fitness stuff, but a lot of their original following grew from their original non-fitness content. 
They did have workout related videos in their early days, yes, but it hadn't quite taken the spotlight until a couple of years later. Some of their earliest content on the platform consisted of comedy skits and storytelling. A lot of their storytelling from their early years brought light to their past and being raised in poverty and the kind of things that they did just to get food and survive on a day-to-day -day basis. It was 1998. We were broke as hell, living together. We needed money. Times was tough. Wife just left us, both of us. Yeah. We were safe. Our first marriage. It, it ended in a train wreck. It was broken. Pretty much all I had to my name was a 1984 Cadillac Barretts that smoked every time I drove it down the street. A couple of years later, they had already established enough success with their first channel that they were ready to branch out into others. Hey, you want to build some muscle, man? In 2010, they created Twin Muscle, which is currently sitting at around 2.8 million subscribers their largest channel to date. What's up everybody? This video is for beginners because I get this question a lot. On this channel, they posted exclusively health and fitness related content, workout videos, bodybuilding advice, and supplement reviews. At this point, they were pulling in audiences from two realms, comedy and fitness. Their combined talent and improv comedy, charisma, humor, and social skills were an incredible combination at boosting their attention and gaining popularity. They went on like this for a couple years and as they continued to grow in popularity, they began taking questions in from the viewers and answering them on YouTube. Everything else yeah. is going to fall in And don't worry about being nervous. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like when I met my wife, I was nervous, right? I asked her. I said, it took me two weeks to ask her for a phone. I said, hey. Hey, uh, hey girl, hey, uh, can I get your phone number? And she's like... They did so well in this type of content that they began another YouTube channel called Ask Hodge Twins. They were now killing it in terms of video content on three different YouTube channels. So what did they do with this extremely receptive audience? Start another YouTube channel called Hodge Twins Vlogs, which was originally called Fasting Twins, but was renamed later. At this point in the timeline, they had four YouTube channels, all killing it. They had the YouTube machine under their thumb, and they were unstoppable. Let's talk about their humor for a moment because it was obviously the gasoline that fueled the Hodge Twins engine. No matter what video you clicked on, there were three things that would happen that would guarantee a laugh out of you. One, the video setup. Before every video began, they would almost prepare for the video on camera while it was rolling. It was obviously not real, but hilarious nonetheless. There were a number of things that they would do, including getting so uncomfortably close to the camera to check for blemishes, Hey man. This was such an incredibly rare thing for someone to do on camera, as anyone and everyone trying to gain a following on YouTube was fixated on appearing flawless and perfect. Within seconds of the video beginning, they were separated from the rest, made you laugh, and had your attention. The second thing they would do is get in the shot. Yeah, buddy. Give me some room! Give me some room! Come on, man! Give me up, man! Before they even began talking, they would frame themselves in the camera. They would bully each other for the spotlight, which was hilarious to see as they are two massive dudes fighting to fit into your tiny computer screen. So, I, if I was you, get the f out the way. Get out of my damn ear, Kevin. You. But anyway, I'm hey. bigger, man. Look how big I look than you, man. Look bigger. how much bigger I am. I'm bigger. Look at all them games. Them games right there, man. I'm bigger, man. You just tall. Anyways, hey man, you know, uh... One was obviously not getting more attention than the other, but it was still funny to witness them scrap over it like little kids. And the third thing they would do is, after they began talking or reading someone's email, one of them was bound to either interrupt or attack the other for doing something goofy or misspeaking. We're currently getting- Just Shut up! You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me read the email. Man, that's a long ass email. It ain't that long if you shut up! She looked- Okay, it was- it wasn't flat. <laughs> Get out of my ear! Truly love my girl and don't want to lose her. Why is she breathing all over my doll? Oh, I'm desperate, need some advice. Take a gun. That's what I do. That's 
stuff peppered me. Shut up. I said my dad had a problem with it. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to be like my but dad. But you know what, man? Why are you? I can't even finish the sentence. You scream it in my ear. I let you finish. That's what she wants. Shut up. Oh. It would often take them a couple minutes to actually get to the video content itself. Hey, Hog Twins. Hey. I have a quick... <laughs> I man, quit. you know what, man? This is something. You know, we gotta, we gotta handle it. What? Because people is writing to us. Yeah. And they need advice. They need help. Yeah. And you in there fucking laughing? This, say, this is no joking matter. All right. You need to take your job a lot more serious. Yeah. Tell her that, man. Shut up. Oh, Look, My man. Why you keep losing your place? Do you need a bookmark? <laughs> and this was the Hodge Twins format and it never got old, or to me at least. Before the video even began, the audience was primed for consumption. The viewer was giggly and giddy and felt connected to the twins. Also, there were four other elements that created such a magnetic pull to the viewers. The first one was momentum. One of the reasons the twins were so funny was how they built off each other's lines and energy in the video. One twin seemed to get momentum off of the other, and they would just go back and forth, over and over, creating this hilarious dynamic. You gotta be dressed nice too, you gotta be presentable. Yeah. You can't look like a hot mess. Yeah. I mean, it has its limitations. <laughs> you can't have a damn hoodie on come up. Where are you going? <laughs> the second element was that it was authentic. The humor felt real. It was unscripted, and you can tell that they were just flying off the seat of their pants in almost every video. I will give you some pro, some uh, some intro action. I'm gonna give you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually a pound heavier for some odd reason, cause I gotta go take a piss. <laughs> you hold a pound of piss for you? Gets all these muscles in here. <laughs> it's twisted, right? You should do both shoulders because you got two of them. <laughs> See, this is the shoulder to up. <laughs> I got all kinds of snap back to that thing. But it's a great exercise to strength up the muscles. <laughs> Not to mention that they had each other's exact sense of humor, almost as if they were twins or something. They would make each other laugh with such honesty that you just couldn't help but laugh with them. And what I mean by that is that they would constantly catch each other off guard with jokes or just straight up telling each other to shut up. You gonna take care of this? Shut up! Hey, shut up! Yeah, cause uh... Shut up! Long distance relationship. Long distance, that's what I said. <laughs> like, maybe shut up! You know I love you, right? Mm. Look at me! <laughs> so look, man, shut up! Like a Key Sweat song. You may be. Shut up, man! That's some good foreplay, right? That's what yeah, you're saying, right? Some great foreplay. Gotta get in Whatever she. Shut up! <laughs> that ain't no pain I wish on anybody. And shut up! The third element was tension. Their videos held almost a constant tension in them. A tension built on humor. The feeling you get when someone is telling a joke to you and the punchline is just about to drop. He, uh, he's, he's passed on. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, hey. I, I don't know what to say. You, you was kind of asking for it. <laughs> you was, you was asking for it. It created this incredibly engaging atmosphere in their videos. The tension was also created in waiting to see which twin was going to crack first. You could always tell when one of them was on the edge of losing it. I almost felt myself in on the joke, like I was in the room and I felt like I was on the verge of breaking first, but I held on to see if I could hold it like Keith or Kevin did. I at my job for the summer. We talked to each other a lot and made each other laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and the last element that created this magnetic pull to the viewers was that it was edgy. I would be a fool to not include their edge, inappropriate, or raunchy sense of humor. If you expose the porn at an early age, all guys go through this. Cause I remember I was your age, I would be at work. I'm like, man, I can't wait to get home and watch that scene again. You know what I'm saying? Man, some things you just really shouldn't say. <laughs> you ever think of that? I feel like this is my personal revenge <laughs> that I'm finally having the sex I deserve. 
They would talk about stuff that no other creator would do. In fact, I was nervous taking on this project in fear of the monetization system, which also wasn't a factor for them in their early years, and well, we'll get to that later. Doc took my um, tip, right? Took a Q-tip. Shoved it inside of the pee hole! <laughs> How's that? Ah! And he went, checked it out, and it was, um, yeah, some, uh, chlamydia. It also opened a lot of doors for them to answer questions and give advice on subjects that no other creator would do. It created a very personal bond between the viewer and the twins because they would talk about a lot of things that the viewers likely wouldn't talk about with even their closest friends. Now we get into what I'm considering the golden years of Hodge Twins content. You might disagree based on when you were into them or which content of theirs that you valued the most, and that's fine. But I tried to find some kind of separation marker in this time. But honestly, they crushed it for like six years straight on YouTube. They were collabing with other channels, launched their own clothing line, and even began going on worldwide tours doing comedy shows. But we on tour and we go, we doing stand-up comedy. For more cities and dates, please go to HarshTwinsTour.com. Hey, another thing. Let's go on for a little ride, man. Let's go on, on for a little ride, man. Hold on, man. Get serious. I'm going to go on for a little ride, man. Get serious on Another massive video series that they started was reviewing fast food in their car. It just goes to show that these guys could pick anything to do as a video series, and it would do well, because their personality and comedy dynamic made literally everything they did entertaining. Sure, they received a lot of hate early on, which obviously didn't bring them down. But okay. then, you know, you got people coming out yeah. stating that we need to quit making videos because right. we're not scientists and shit. You know what I'm saying? Man, y'all got some crooked ass fucking teeth, man. You snaggle tooth, shark mouth motherfucker. <laughs> hey man, what's up with them big ass lips, man? Hey, I got a, a damn hot bowl of Campbell soup here. Can you bring them big ass lips over here and blow my soup? Cool that off, man. You ought to quit the YouTube thing and be a damn professional soup cooler. Hey! Ironically, some of that hate founded their most popular catchphrases of all time. But hey, it's just advice, right? You can do well with the. You wanna do? <laughs> Over the years, they created a number of catchphrases that strengthened the community between them and their fans even more. God, it's crazy, man. We haven't been selling this uh, catchphrase for the longest, man. Yeah, this is one of the most popular ones, right? Yeah, this is what, this would really, this catchphrase really, I mean, this was, it changed everything when we started saying this in our videos. Yeah. I mean, it really took us over over the top, man, because it got us out of our shell because we were still not, we well, always being ourselves, right? But we wasn't really being ourselves until he said that one catchphrase. No, we was being I, all serious. I was like, look, yeah. Take your creatine two times a day, <laughs> then go to sleep, wake up, repeat. That's what you do to make games. Yeah. And we was doing our videos all s straight and square, right? Yeah. And then we did this video, right? Where we somebody pissed me off, was talking all kinds of shit about the advice we gave. Yeah. I said, you know what? In this <laughs> video, I'm gonna go back over it, <laughs> yeah. and you can do whatever the f you wanna do. That's our approach on it. But hey, you do it the f Go out there and do whatever the f <laughs> <laughs> you wanna do. That's how it blew up, man. And we kept that one catchphrase, man. We didn't plan it. It just was a spur of the moment. And then, the other catchphrase, making all kinds of games, Yeah. didn't plan it either. Keep us, we was leaving the gym, and uh, and I was screwing around with Keith. Keith didn't really want me to record him. Like, you know, that's in all the videos. I pop up my camera, I won't tell Keith, and I start recording. He was walking out to his car, right? Yeah. I said, that was the very first time I ever said that. Didn't even plan it, I don't even know why I said it. I, yeah, but we just left the gym, man. We hit back in arms. As you can see, we've been making all kinds of games. All kinds. Hey, man. You wanna build some muscle, man? Hey, man. You wanna build some muscle? Yeah? That's good. That's real good. You just found one of the best fitness channels on YouTube. Ciao! 
and there is a bunch more that I can't see in this video in fear of the YouTube gods smiting this video into demonetized hell. Elliot Holes even made a video where he attributes a lot of the success that he received on YouTube to advice that he received from the twins. I saw another YouTube channel in the fitness realm. I don't watch many other channels, but these guys were great. They were entertaining and informative, and their channel was exploding. I reached out and sent an email to Keith Hodge. Gratitude, Keith Hodge, for you inspiring me to make more videos. You say two or three a day and make multiple channels. I created the Elliot Said channel and spread your ideas no matter what they happen to be, fitness or not, through your YouTube channels. Thank you, Keith Hodge, for your inspiration and thank you also for showing me that YouTube is also a business. They knew what they were doing and they had the system locked down. The title of this email <laughs> Why did you sell out? Something the twins faced pretty early on in their YouTube careers was being called sellouts. Yeah, the whole email is based on this clean ass gym shark I'm wearing. Yeah. But look here, man. A lot of people have. What's the word I'm looking for? Different definition when it comes to sellout. Well, that definition of what a sellout is is it's f up. It's not the correct definition. It's not the correct definition. Yeah. Let me tell you what a sellout is. A sellout right. is compromising your own integrity right. to make money. Man, that was beautiful, man. It was, boom. Was that in the dictionary? Did you say that? No, I got a good vocabulary. However, this wasn't unique to the Hodge twins. Many YouTubers experienced this during the evolution of YouTube as a business platform. At first, it was the twins promoting merchandise with their own personal brand or companies that they were working with or sponsored by. It was a weird time on YouTube when the creators started promoting things for the viewers to buy. I mean, literally any YouTuber that got big and promoted so much as a t-shirt with their logo on it was labeled a sellout at one point. Heaven forbid you try to make a living with another company or even your own brand on your own tank top. We have never ever since we've been on YouTube when it comes to fitness have ever lied to you guys because we was going to get paid for anything. Yeah. We have so many endorsements coming towards us but it doesn't fit with us and we don't believe yeah. in that product. We haven't did a video on it because we don't believe it. Gymshark, we like that brand of clothes so guess what? It's something you guys might like so guess what? We're wearing the videos because it's something you guys might enjoy as well. Just not only us. Yeah, I, we probably could have, oh man, we could have made a grip. You know how much money I could have made up on this mother man? I could have made all kinds of money. I could have came up with, but see all these games? Yeah. See them games? This is how I made them games. Yeah, I, I could have read this and this and this and this. Yeah, but I did. Yeah, so we're not sellouts. I think it was a bit ridiculous, but understand how things were back then. If you were a fitness icon, you worked with fitness companies. It's pretty simple. And I never understood why people got so mad about it. It's like people didn't want their favorite creators to earn money from entertaining them or something. If you look on YouTube and how we make our money on YouTube, it's based on advertising. When you look at a video, we're earning money off that video based on those advertisements. If you're saying that we're set off because we're advertising things on our YouTube channel, then guess what? Everybody on YouTube is a sellout because that's how every YouTuber on YouTube earns a living. It's through advertising dollars. They were also called sellouts for promoting Hodge Twins TV because they realized their format of content delivery was no longer YouTube friendly. Hey, welcome to Hodge Twins TV. The YouTube monetization system was evolving to a point where it purged any creator that had violent, sexual, or inappropriate content, and the twins were not safe from it. The reason why we created this channel, we want to continue to survive on YouTube. Yeah. The way things are going, that does not look likely at all. Because of the content we discuss on the other channels, because we say f and bust no lead. Yeah. And just the overall content we discuss on our channel, YouTube don't put ads on our videos. If you wanted to be a creator on YouTube and wanted to make a living from it, you had to evolve with the system. It really was a sink or swim situation, and the twins chose to swim. They announced Hodge Twins TV, where they had exclusive and uncensored content. For dedicated fans, there was a place where they could see the twins in their rawest, truest forms like they were back in the day. It was a huge bummer to see them have to adapt like this, but I understood it was a necessity. A lot of people were mad at them for this. They were mad to see the twins shake up the formula that they knew and loved and wanted them to stay the way that they always were. And I get the frustration, I really do. But honestly, I think the twins had had enough experience with humor that their content was easily as funny without the cussing and raunchy comments. Sure, it wasn't exactly the same, but we watched them for them, right? 
not what they talked about or said. We enjoyed their personality, their charisma, the way that they said things, the way they interacted with each other, their humor. It wasn't necessarily how many dirty jokes they could cram into a video for me. But again, that's just my opinion. You might disagree. But I will admit that they were pretty relentless when it came to promoting their touring. From a business standpoint, it was incredibly smart to do this in your platform where you have the most eyes. But I can see how people would get annoyed by it. I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with either one of these two openings to the Hodge Twins videos. We got some new shows coming! Yeah, we're going to Salt Lake City, Utah, Irvine, California, Brad, California. Over time, people would grow to understand that this was just the system now. It became a norm, and people stopped being angry about it for the most part. But they definitely faced a lot of backlash early on. Ain't no steroids, man. I'm, I'm 100. But I would tell you this, man. I, I, I would tell you this, man. I'm 100 natural. 100 man. Hey, man. 100 natural. Yeah. If we wasn't natural, man, I would be fucking huge. Yeah. Not be strong as. Yeah. I ain't pushing no real weight. I mean, if you think I we still, are... we are still yet to put on 30 pounds of muscle since we've been training. Yeah. And you accuse us being on steroids? If you think we on steroids, let me tell you this. You ain't got no common sense or confidence in what the human body can do yeah. naturally, man. Yeah. People that say that, they haven't sat down and put in the hard work and the diet and lifting. That's why they say things like that. Man. Yeah, cause they because they never put in the work. It's a lot easier for somebody to say somebody's on steroids. Yeah. You know, than to go out there and actually put in the hard work and help. Yeah. You it's know? a lot easier to do that, man. Yeah, just do sit it. down, do a video, and just keep somebody on steroids. So when I started making this project, I hadn't even realized it yet, but I had completely forgotten about the twins. It was only until you people relentlessly called Elliot the third Hodge twin in my video that I remembered that they even existed. The YouTube algorithm just straight up phased them off my feed. I don't know what happened, but after researching this video, I saw that I was still subscribed to them, but YouTube just stopped showing me their content at some point. It's too bad, because if that hadn't happened, then I probably would have been more in tune with all the little details of their evolution over the the past few years. I didn't even know that they started a new channel, which we'll talk about soon. And honestly, after putting in research to this video, I'm kind of pissed off that I unawarely missed out on so much of the Hodge Twins content. Now there's no way I can go back and binge that many videos, but that's just the way it is. I would have rather made the conscious choice to stop watching them after I decided that I was done instead of YouTube telling me that I was done. It's possible that the twins were just more active on their new channel and stopped putting out videos on their old channels and I just happened to miss them and, and not see them in my feed. But my theory is that it had something to do with the type of content that they were putting out at the time. The type of content that they were putting out on their new, more controversial channel might not be the type of content that YouTube wants representing itself. And when you start putting out content that the YouTube gods don't approve of, they have a way of silencing the creators in a way that it just makes it harder for their content to reach their subscribers. YouTube has a way of silencing these channels that they don't want representing their platform. So, it makes me think that if YouTube was trying to shadow ban them or blacklist them or something, that could be the case. I could be wrong, but it just seems odd. I get like you're subscribed to one channel, all of a sudden you stop seeing that channel, like that seems like a little more possible to me, but really? All four YouTube channels simply vanished from my feed entirely? I've read some comments from people who have shared the belief that the twins have deliberately been controversial these days to beat the algorithm and make it back into the mainstream. But who knows? It's always tough to say whether these creators are just going for shock value or whether they truly believe the things that they're saying. And I wasn't going to include this in this video, but I've seen others commenting that they've experienced the twins also not showing up in their timelines. So I'm curious if this was the case for you. Let me know in the comments because I'm, I'm curious what your experience was, whether they like were phased out from your timeline completely as well, or if things just continued on as normal. So enough beating around the bush, let's get into the conservative twins. 
Now that we've talked about the rise, it's time to talk about the inevitable fall. Just so we're clear, they are still very popular. When I say fall, I mean from the eyes of their original fan base and the fitness community. They are no longer icons in the gym or as advice givers. In 2018, they created the Conservative Twins, which is almost at 2 million subscribers. Clearly their new messaging is resonating with a lot of people, but I think there was a reason they created a new channel for these new viewers. It wasn't because they knew their fan base would carry over, it was probably because they knew it was going to make waves with their original fan base, and it would be better to just start a new channel with a clean slate, a fresh platform to take a stance from. And there's always the possibility that Keith and Kevin just started a new YouTube channel because that's what they do. <laughs> it's worked for them in the past, every time they want to move in a new direction they just start a new YouTube channel, just like that, and then that channel blows up. So. Maybe they didn't put much more thought into it than that. But what was clear was that the twins were moving in a new direction. Some of the diehard fans would carry over and continue to support them in whatever they do, and other fans they would lose along the way. I don't think that was of much concern to them. And I will say to their credit that it is courteous of them to just start a new channel because if they had just been starting to put all of this political, controversial stuff on their like original channels, I think they would have really pissed their fans off. and. I think they probably suspected that as well. But enough of my speculating, let's move on. The Conservative Twins, for my brief amount of research, is a place where they voice their political views, often controversial. Here they took a political stance and were ready to die on that mega hill. They were avid Trump supporters and they made that known. And as you may already know, when you take such a strong stance on such controversial subjects, you're going to make a lot of people mad. But you can't lose a following if it's on a new channel, right? So this new channel started off with the same Hodge Twins formula of being close up and up front to the camera, but it evolved over time to a more formal setting of both of them sitting behind a desk. It's very polished and professional looking. There's nothing wrong with this, obviously, and I'm happy to see them as creators evolve and flourish. But you have to admit, it loses the personal feeling that the old format had. One of my favorite things about the Hodge Twins was watching them compete for the camera shot. That childlike humor dissolves in this setting. On the other side of things, Ask Hodge Twins and the original channel at this time kept the same video format going, but made some obvious adjustments to give it the same political feel, like the America hats or the American flag in the back. Ask Hodge Twins continues to put out advice videos. I've watched a few of them and honestly they're still pretty good. I'm happy to see they're still putting out something that resembles their original content. I really am. It's just too bad that the right wing propaganda from the conservative twins has leaked into their other channels. And look, th this isn't in my script, but I feel like I should probably say this. I'm a Canadian, okay? I could give a rip about American politics at all. A lot of people said in my Rise and Fall of Elliot Hulls video that uh, I just disagreed with his political stance and I was a, a left-wing liberal and all, and all that crap. I, I really don't care. I don't care about any of that stuff. And I honestly don't really care which way they lean. If they were fighting for the opposite side, it would still be annoying to have American politics mixing in with their original content. I, I really don't care about the political side or whatever. The only thing politically I care about is that oftentimes whichever way you're leaning is associated with what kind of views you have on the world. And that's more where the judgment or the criticism comes in because that's where I fundamentally disagree. But other than that, I'm just trying to document this as objectively as possible and as I see it. And I don't have to be an American or follow American politics to know that it's too bad when you're just trying to enjoy a video of the Hodge twins giving some classic dating advice or something that I'm staring at this American flag the whole time that's just really setting the scene. They're wearing their America t-shirts with the American flag in the back and patriotic colors and it just it really kind of takes you out of the video content or what they're talking about because they frame the video in this way. Like even if they're just giving someone some goofy sex advice or some lifting advice or something like that you can feel the other agenda in the video you can feel it leaking through and for me honestly it just kind of ruins the Hodge Twins experience. Not to mention when an ad like like this pops up. Use discount code Chinese bars, I give you 20% off. And it just really puts you in that mindset. Doesn't matter what they're talking about because now that's in your brain. And honestly, I just, I, I could not believe this ad when I saw it. I honestly cannot believe that they are using discount code Chinese virus on their merchandise. Discount code Chinese virus. We call it Chinese because it's from China. We making t-shirts great again. Merchandise that's about the Kung Flu, or whatever line Trump was pushing at the time. I just cannot believe that they don't understand how insulting that must be to someone of Asian origin, or how misleading they've become treating the pandemic A like a joke, and B something to profit off of. It's honestly sickening. 
especially to those of us who've lost loved ones to this deadly virus. To see them making money off of it, like it's a punchline to a joke, actually really pisses me off. And this is just a side note, it has no relevance to the video itself. But when I peeked into the Hodge Twins universe after not being involved in it for a few years, I thought I was seeing two more Elliots. People always call Elliot the third Hodge Twin, and now I think he embodies that more than ever. Especially with the same propaganda in the arsenal. What the hell happened to these guys? Look here, in all seriousness, yeah. this is what a sellout is. Right. A sellout right. is compromising your own integrity right. to make money. Use discount code Chinese virus, I'll give you 20% off. So with the American propaganda and ads like this popping up at the same time, I quickly lose interest in what the twins are saying and I leave the video. Now I've seen a lot of fans complaining about the Hodge twins and that the Hodge twins should be cancelled. I used to follow them years ago. They used to talk about just life, uh, depression, how to get women, how to make money, what to do in a breakup, how to fix things, how to do certain things, working out. That's pretty much their main niche. Uh, maybe feel, people feel like they was getting exposed because they they were not in agreement with the the George Floyd protests, come you know, just crazy people. They're unproductive. They're rioting and destroying their own communities. Like who would do some, such a thing? And so scrolling down on Facebook, I'm looking at this, going through the articles. And they were sitting up here and saying, "Oh shoot, well yeah, there you go. The high twins, they need to be canceled. They're stupid. They're ignorant. I don't care how much success, because uh, I mean, high twins. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, just don't subscribe to them." I mean, who cares? I mean, they already got, they already making their money and stuff like that, man. I mean, I'm not a huge fan. Of, I mean, I use people who want to cancel hot students. You have every right to do that. You know, regardless if you feel like, oh, well, because I don't like what they're saying, that's cool. Just create your own YouTube videos or you don't have to be a YouTuber, go out here and be for the people. Do what you got to do and be that change. I don't know y'all personally. And listen, I would be open to have a conversation with you in person, but you two are a disgrace, y'all. Cancel. Cancel, yo. I need to unsubscribe to y'all channel. I need to unsubscribe to y'all on, on every social media platform. So I agree with most of their points up to where they start saying the twins should be canceled. Cancel the Hodge twins. There's nothing wrong with them being political or taking a stance on anything. There's nothing wrong with them saying something that you disagree with. We live in a country of free speech and that's a right and that shouldn't be ripped away from people. You don't like them anymore? Stop watching them. There's no reason why they should have their voice taken away from them. We had a couple venues cancel our shows. It sold out. <laughs> they actually canceled them because they, after we booked the show and the tickets were on sale, they went and did some research about us, like yeah. our YouTube channel and Facebook, yeah. Yeah. and find out we're conservative, and they canceled the show. Yeah. Just because we're conservative. Even if it's insulting or I completely disagree with it, they still have a right to say what they want. My aim in this video is not to disagree with their politics. My point is to raise awareness that if you take a hard stance on anything, people are going to disagree, sometimes strongly. Sometimes it's not even about what wing you're on or who you support. It's what you believe about society that shines through your message. Some sides happen to believe in a more negative or controversial message and that will always come with a backlash of people disagreeing with you. Plain and simple. And now that I'm talking about it, I'm actually kind of glad that YouTube didn't recommend them to me so much in the past few years, so I didn't have to see them devolve to this. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now for the part of the video that I was not looking forward to making. Especially since this subject is a literal minefield. I'm going to do my best to navigate the situation without accidentally stepping on any mines. So from my understanding, the twins take an anti-black stance, which was shocking for me to wrap my head around since they're of darker ethnicity themselves. A lot of the black community has been angered by their stances on racial issues and feel betrayed by the twins' messaging. And again, just a disclaimer here, I am not personally speaking for the black community with my responses here. I'm only repeating back what I've heard and trying to put all these pieces together. For example, if a white cop abuses his power and unjustly kills an African American, they will side with the cop because it's more in line with their political agenda. I mean, I can't be mad at this police officer. I mean, you can I mean, be mad. I you mean, can be mad. You can put blame, but who's in charge of that situation? Who's in control? You are. Why do these black people keep putting their lives in somebody else's hands? And everybody's talking about, oh my God, he got shot in front of his kids, which is a tragedy, which is horrible. But yeah. personally, I don't think Jacob gave a damn about his kids being in the back of the car. Because if I was in that position 
and I'm with my kids and they in the back of the car and the cops point a gun at me and start giving me demands, last thing I'm going to do as a father yeah. is jump in the car with my kids. The, the cops. Nobody's are, saying anything about that. I'm up more upset at Jacob than anybody. You got yeah. your kids in the car, man. The twins would rather target the victim and explain why the injustice they experienced was deserved than to acknowledge the situation for what it really is. Another black man has been shot and killed by a white supremacist. Yeah. Let me show you why the cops shot him. They don't sympathize with the victim, they blame the victim. One of the biggest ripples that they made was their videos arguing that Black Lives Matter is a lie. That Black Lives Matter organization is just to keep black folks upset because the Democrats want you to vote for the Democrats. Yeah, that's man. the whole point of this organization is keep black people pissed off Yeah. so they can keep you enslaved mentally like you need them. Yeah. Because they're supposed to be y'all saviors. They're not trying to fix any issues in your community. No. They just want to keep y'all pissed off so y'all be indebted to them because yeah. supposedly they're going to clean this up for yeah. you. So the twins are taking the stance that it's a humanitarian issue, not a racial issue. All lives matter. Man, you got to tell them why all lives matter. No, that's, that should be obvious. All lives do matter. You got to explain this to people. <laughs> <laughs> all lives matter. And like, they're right to a degree only in the sense that all lives matter and it's kind of an impossible statement to argue. Because if you disagree, it makes you sound like you don't think that all lives matter. Which is a shifty and sneaky way of brushing off racism as an issue that's not important. They look at every racial situation that happens and break it down as an individual event. They take a by the situation approach and see this as the wiser approach to seeing the whole picture. But unfortunately, it is not as black and white as this. And even in their best cases, the twins are 100% selecting clips that best suit their agenda. I mean, why would they ever use a clip that has the potential of showing the many cases of police brutality that are fueled by racism and nothing else? The victim is not always deserving of the punishment they are receiving. In a lot of cases, it's just straight up racist assault protected by a badge. Yeah, so as far as, um, you know, what they said, you know, I, like, you know, it's black, you know, police hunting black men every day. There are police officers that are hunting black men every day. There's no need for, if he went for my gun, for me to pull out a gun and then kill him. You get what I'm saying? I understand he may have been trying to kill me. I get that. But if the threat is now neutralized, why kill him? No, that's, that should be obvious. All lives do matter. You got to explain this to people. <laughs> All lives. All lives don't matter until black lives matter. Black lives don't matter currently. Black lives matter doesn't mean black lives matter more. Black lives matter just means black lives should matter and it currently does not matter. Black lives are a part of all lives. So black lives matter. Yeah, I'm not from Africa, never been to Africa. Yeah. I don't know nothing about Africa. Okay, I don't speak Africa. Someone should ask them why. Someone should ask them why they don't know anything about Africa. Someone should ask them why uh, they have no cultural roots to Africa. I wonder what the reason for that is. Oh, let me just really think about that. Maybe your ties to your ancestors were severed and that um, you have no cultural connection to the continent uh, that you are originally from. I wonder what the f that was. What if Democrat party woke up and they stopped preaching race and identity pol politics? The Democratic Party will be signing up. The entire purpose of this video going viral is literally identity politics. It's because black people, two black guys, are saying the shit that white people normally say. That is the only reason why you have any fucking relevance. If it wasn't for identity politics, you would not have a crumb of relevance. Neither of you would be even remotely as relevant as you are now. Get the f out of here. Do you know what it is to be African? Yeah. It just means your nationality, where you were born. Yeah. You could be white and be African. It just means you were born in Africa. But African is not a race, it's a nationality. Let's go over some of the fallacies that we had just witnessed and um, break down exactly what they're saying that's wrong. So. But they will never call out any uh, injustice done to black people, police brutality. Racism. They say racism does not exist. Racism does exist. It does. 
You telling me people don't, you telling me pe black people don't get attacked because of their skin color? You telling me black people don't get profiled? Come on, man. You will be so quick to post a video about somebody black doing something bad and laughing at them and calling them out. Why don't you ever acknowledge the good that black people do? Why, why don't you ever acknowledge black entrepreneurs? Black people that's doing positive in the community. Black people that, that's doing well for themselves and, and building each other up. Why the f do y'all want to tear why do, why do y'all want to tear us down, man? The issue, from my understanding, is that black lives are not even on the same playing field yet. Our society isn't even at a place yet where all lives matter, because black lives are not being treated equally. Until we elevate black lives to the same treatment that everyone else gets, all lives matter does not make sense as a statement. The twins believe they aren't attacking black lives, they're defending white lives. A sort of devil's advocate approach to the issue. I understand the message that they're trying to say, and it might be from a place of good intentions. It really might be. They aren't necessarily trying to bring all black people down, they're trying to lift everyone up at the same time. Unfortunately, the Black Lives Matter movement is a bigger issue for our society to work on right now, and in my opinion, it does take priority. Until black lives are treated equally and are on a playing level field, all lives matter is an empty argument. I know this is a sensitive and difficult issue, so if I've said anything you disagree with or felt I painted the black community in a light that is not accurate, please let me know. I knew taking on the twins, as they are currently, might be complicated, so if I offended anyone, I apologize. Let's move on to the next section of the video. And now it's time to pour one out for Twin Muscle. Twin Muscle today has degraded to pretty much only fast food reviews. Look, I used to love these reviews. They were a funny, refreshing change of pace and actually inspired me at times that these two jack dudes could eat fast food and live a jack lifestyle. But over time, their workout channel has just kind of devolved into eating junk food. And I actually think that balancing out a health and fitness channel with the occasional fast food review is a really smart thing to do and refreshing in terms of content. It lets the viewer who is also trying to live a healthy fit lifestyle indulge in their junk food with them and kind of eat it vicariously through their videos with them. But when the entire channel is just eating fast food, I feel like that's kind of the opposite message that they should be sending the world if they're <laughs> a health and fitness channel. Now it's just two jacked guys eating fast food. That's it. And I don't think that's a great message. It just became clear that their passion was no longer to put out health and fitness content. And that's just kind of sad. Obviously all the political and racial stuff sucks, but it's just sad to see the workout stuff fade away from the spotlight. A lot of us found the Hodge Twins through their workout related content. Hi guys, in this video I just want to demonstrate the upright row. It's a great exercise to build up muscular shoulders and traps when you perform this exercise. That's the context in which we got to know and love them. So when the core root of what makes you follow somebody is removed, there's nothing left to follow. I feel like a lot of fitness YouTubers start off 100% fitness and then start talking about or promoting other ideas over time. And I think that's fine. Everybody evolves and our interests change. But you know, if you're gonna keep putting out content on that YouTube channel where you've accumulated a following for a particular type of content, you should keep putting out regular content on that channel that the people love to begin with. Otherwise, you may as well start a new YouTube channel. When someone subscribes to you, they expect a certain type of content from you. Obviously, creators have the power to shift from the norm and put out whatever they want. My channel's a prime example of that. But I think it's important for creators to remember what, what the beating heart of their channel is. What made the people fall in love with it? What, what made the people attach to it? You can repaint the walls and redecorate a house as many times as you want, but if you start messing with the structure, it's gonna fall apart. And from what I've seen, from my experience, is that people can tolerate opinions that they don't agree with if the YouTuber is true to their original content. But for a lot of people, the fitness stuff was always the beating heart of the Hodge Twins. And when you rip that heart out, what's left? And as I was doing this research, I saw that they did recently put out a workout video and I got kind of excited about it, but it's with a political influencer. So I already know how that's gonna go. I, you don't drink water when you work out? No, but I'm kidding. I don't drink water. <laughs> I like the heat. Shut up, man. I'm just joking. I'm not African. I'm American. So this is the part of the video where I share my thoughts as a whole on the Hodge Twins. The Twins are a bittersweet taste in my mouth. When I think of them, I remember all their classic content that always made me laugh. 
I also think of their current, more controversial content that I don't enjoy. Nonetheless, they've dedicated years, if not most of their lives, in giving advice and making people laugh, and that will always be respectable to me. They are titans in YouTube fitness, and I have nothing but respect for them as creators. Do I agree or even like their current content? No, but that doesn't mean I hate them. I just disagree with them. Their current content still carries their charm, charisma, and humor, but the message is just different and not a message I can get behind anymore, so I no longer follow them. I'll always love and cherish the content that they once gave us. They are still an inspiration to me as to what a fitness YouTuber can be, and I personally can relate to their brotherly love and sense of humor with a brother of my own who's close to me in age as well. And as for the political or racial side of things, I want to think that they truly believe that what they are doing and saying is for the greater good of humanity. But it is always tough to say when it comes to politics, what they say and why they say it. Are they really pushing an agenda that they believe in, or are they just doing this for the money? Have they completely bought into the message that they're delivering, or are they doing it for the relevancy? Do they still genuinely care about being entertainers, and somewhere deep down inside of them is the same twins that first started their YouTube channel years ago? As a viewer, I don't know the answer to this, and I can't know the answer to this. You can only speculate and share opinions, and that's okay. As YouTube creators, we should never fool ourselves into thinking we have any kind of power to hold judgment over others. And since I don't know for certain what their motives are, I can't really pass any kind of judgment here. In my opinion, there are worse stances to take than humanitarian. They aren't straight up attacking others, they're just maybe elevating the wrong people. I do think, however, that they should rethink the stances that they're taking on their public platforms and consider the damage it could be doing to the black community and how we perceive difficult issues like racism, police brutality, and everything else associated with their current messaging. For me personally, I think it's disappointing that they really aren't into the fitness scene anymore because that was my favorite aspect of them. But I get it, they're in their mid-40s now. We can't expect them to crush the bodybuilding scene forever, and they're allowed to change interests over time as they evolve as people. I think it's great that they are building a new audience who supports their new ideas. I just know that I personally am not in that audience anymore. That's real, man! That's, That's real. some real shit. That's some of the real shit I've ever read in my life, man! Hold on, man. Let me see. You ought to write books and shit, man. That's oh. some real shit. Thank you guys so much for watching and I appreciate you sticking through this video all the way to the end. I had a lot of fun making this documentary because honestly I spent most of the time laughing. Like I mentioned earlier, I hadn't been following them for a while and I forgot how damn funny these guys are. In making this video, it allowed me to comb through years of Hodge Twins content and do a little bit of catch up. And after I ended a lot of these editing sessions, I had sore cheeks from laughing so much. I hope that in whatever we discuss in this video that you stay respectful and open-minded of the twins because whether we agree with them or not, they're human beings with families and lives too. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider doing so for more content like this. Hitting that subscribe button and even liking the video would go a long way for my channel and it would really help me grow. Doing things like turning on the notifications, leaving comments, hitting the like or dislike really helps my video on the YouTube algorithm. So. I appreciate it. And lastly, follow me on Instagram for daily motivation, health and fitness tips, content updates, and more. And hey, <laughs> I gotta plug myself at some point. I'm an online personal trainer. So if you wanna work with me personally, shoot me a DM on Instagram. I promise I respond to everybody that messages me. Thanks again for watching and a special thanks to the Hodge Twins for putting out content for so many years and completely dedicating yourself to YouTube. Me and so many others appreciate you guys. Klaus next out.